Good morning. I promise there won't be too many mammograms during this talk, but there will be a few. So here's my uh, required disclosure statement. I have no disclosures. And I'm going to be talking about pitfalls in breast ultrasound today. And these are my objectives for this talk. I hope by the end of it, you will be able to describe some specific pitfalls in breast ultrasound, as well as what to look for sonographically and as well as a few mammographic features to avoid either missing malignancy or recommended, recommending unneeded biopsies. I also hope that you just enjoy looking at lots of good, hopefully, ultrasound cases. So basically, when I think about pitfalls in breast imaging, I think of two broad categories. Basically, mistaking a malignancy for a benign finding or missing a cancer, or recommending unnecessary biopsies that could be safely avoided. There's a third subcategory which can actually lead to either of the two main categories, which is in, inappropriate or failure to carefully correlate mammographic and sonographic appearance. So I will be showing some case examples, four different types, as well as multiple companion cases for each of them. I'll start with a benign appearing malignancy and go over some more examples of that as well as complex cystic and solid masses, as I think these can be quite difficult. The uh, typically benign echogenic mass occasionally is not benign. And also, I'll be showing some cases of correlation between mammography and ultrasound. So starting with the first pitfall case, this is a benign appearing malignancy, so I've already given away the answer. This is a 61-year-old woman that had a new mass on her screening mammogram. And you can see here, the mass does have several benign features. It's oval in shape. It's fairly well circumscribed, especially up here, but maybe not so much here. There was no detectable blood flow. And there is some posterior acoustic enhancement. This is also parallel in orientation relative to the skin. And here's a clip of this mass, and I think you can appreciate better on this clip that the margins are really not circumscribed in this area. There's these kind of focal out pouching areas as well as indistinct margins. There's also a second lesion here. This is the mammographic image, and it shows again that there are some areas of the margin that are more angular and indistinct, and this is also denser than the normal breast parenchyma. And this turned out to be a high-grade ERPR negative HER2 positive invasive ductal carcinoma. So some teaching points before we move on to the companion cases. Obviously, as in this case, high-grade invasive ductal car carcinoma often will have some benign features. It can be round or oval in shape and occasionally be so nearly anechoic that may appear to be a complicated cyst and occasionally even a simple cyst. And in fact, one study referenced down here showed that over 75% of high-grade carcinomas demonstrated posterior acoustic enhancement, which is typically associated with cystic lesions, versus 8% of the low-grade tumors. So this often benign finding of posterior acoustic enhancement can actually indicate a more aggressive tumor type. Just to quickly review the benign features of breast masses at ultrasound is oval shape circumscribed margin, parallel to the skin surface, mildly hypoechoic, and that's relative to fat, hyperechoic, which is also relative to fat, and as I mentioned, we're gonna talk about hyperechoic masses in case three. No posterior acoustic features or posterior acoustic enhancement also as in this case. I just wanted to quickly review a few other primary breast malignancies that can appear benign at ultrasound. So we've already talked about the high-grade invasive ductal carcinomas, but there are some more rare subtypes of invasive ductal carcinoma that can also appear benign, including mucinous, medullary, and papillary, and I will be showing some examples of mucinous and papillary carcinomas, as well as very rare adenoid cystic carcinoma, which is more often seen in salivary glands, and then phylloides tumors, which are 
most often benign, but can uh, uh, behave aggressively and also be malignant and metastasize. And I'll go over an example of those later. It's important to remember that the most suspicious finding that you see, either by ultrasound or mammography, is going to determine your final BIRADS assessment and the need for biopsy. Often, as I hope you'll see in the next several cases, this is, um, the key is in the margins. So carefully evaluate the margins. Even if most of the margins appear well circumscribed, if there's even one small area that is not well circumscribed, including angular, microlobular, or indistinct, this should prompt biopsy. And this may be the only suspicious finding that you have. Internal blood flow is helpful when it's present, but if it's not present, it's not terribly helpful because it does not mean that there is no internal vascularity and it does not mean that it's a cyst. And I have several cases of that as well. So this is the first companion case here. You can see this is our primary case up here and this is the case here. This looks very similar. It's oval, parallel, hypochoic, posterior acoustic shadowing. And here's the clip through it. You can see there's also a second lesion here and kind of a septation there. And this turned out to be a fibroadenoma. And this patient actually had several fibroadenomas. Here's another fibroadenoma. This is actually what brought her in. It was palpable, but we had an old mammogram and these were actually decreasing in size and this one had developed these um, typical benign popcorn-like calcifications. And you can see here's the mass with calcifications, the fibroadenoma, and this was the fibroadenoma I showed on the prior slide. And here's another companion case. So this was a 52-year-old woman with a new palpable mass here. You can see here it's overlying the pectoralis, but has really well circumscribed margins. It's oval. And on ultrasound, it also has many benign features. Well circumscribed margins, posterior acoustic enhancement. It's oval and parallel. Lucky for us, this case did have internal vascularity and was biopsied and shown to be a mucinous invasive ductal carcinoma. And here's the clip just showing those features, very well circumscribed, posterior acoustic enhancement. And this is just a kind of a cute companion case. Um, this is just showing here there was no internal vascularity. Um, I think here you can see these actually look quite similar to each other. This is an actually round, which is typically a little bit more suspicious uh, than an oval shape. And we aspirated this, and it completely went away and was consistent with a complicated cyst. So another companion case here. This was a mass that was found on ABUS. This is a coronal reformat of an ABUS exam. This marks the nipple, and this actually shows where this is in the upper outer quadrant of the left breast. I just did a photographic zoom here. You can see this is hypoechoic. And actually here, the margins look pretty indistinct. But at handheld ultrasound, the margins looked, for the most part, very well circumscribed. Again, we have an oval mass, parallel, almost very hypoechoic, almost anechoic with posterior acoustic enhancement and no internal vascularity. And I saw this and interpreted it as a um, ABUS only, or screening breast ultrasound only finding. It met all the criteria, as far as I could see, for BIRADS 3. Um, in retrospect, you could wonder if this margin's actually a little bit angular. You can note here the size. You know where this is going, 0.76 centimeters. She did come back in six months, luckily, and it had grown to just under a centimeter. And you can see, I think the margins look a little more indistinct here. And this was biopsied uh, six months later and shown to be a high-grade invasive ductal carcinoma. Another companion case, this will be the final companion case for pitfall one. This is an, another patient with a palpable mass. You can see the BB here, mostly circumscribed margins, maybe a little indistinct or obscured here. But at ultrasound, I think it's clear you've got these circumscribed margins, but you definitely have some angular indistinct margins over here. And this did have internal vascularity. You can also see this has some cystic change. And this turned out to be a papillary carcinoma. And here's the clip. I think on the clip you can really appreciate that those margins are not completely well circumscribed. And this leads nicely into pitfall case number two, complex cystic and solid mass. Is the, that prior case would be a, a solid mass with cysts in it. So the pitfall case two here, 
another new mass seen mammographically, and this is what we see at ultrasound. Many benign features, again, posterior acoustic enhancement, parallel over in, oval in shape, very well circumscribed margins. No internal vascularity was identified. And here's the clip showing those margins, as far as we can see, look really nice and circumscribed. There are clearly anechoic components, but there are also these hypoechoic areas as well. And it's hard to know, are those solid? Is that just debris and some cysts? Well, this turned out to be just cyst wall and apocrine metaplasia, completely benign. So Byrads defines complex cystic and solid mass as a mass that has anechoic, fluid or cystic components, as we just saw, and echogenic or solid components. This includes cysts with thick walls, and they define thick as zero, um, 0 0.5 millimeters or greater, thick septations, or solid intracystic or mural components. It also includes solid masses with cystic spaces. As you recall, that was the last companion case we saw. Clustered microcysts are benign and can be difficult, if not impossible, to distinguish from complex cystic and solid masses. And sometimes you just have to biopsy a clustered microcyst to prove it. These will consist of small anechoic cysts with thin septations without discrete solid components. It's important to note that these, can't ha these can have microlobulated uh, margins, and that's due to the fact that it's, cr it's created by small cysts, and the walls of those small cysts, kind of like a cluster of grapes, may have a lobular margin, microlobular margin. And there should be no internal vascularity. So complex cystic and solid masses are fairly uncommon. However, more than a third of them can be malignant. When they are malignant, they can be a high-grade invasive ductal carcinoma, and the cystic spaces will represent necrosis in that case. And they may also be papillary lesions. They could be benign papillomas, atypical papillomas, papillary DCIS, or papillary carcinoma. So I have several companion cases for this. So this was a, another new circumscribed round mammographic mass. And at ultrasound, we see a fairly well circumscribed, but again, not completely, nearly anechoic mass with all these irregular looking septations and mural nodularity. No internal vascularity could be appreciated. And this turned out to be a high grade ductal carcinoma in situ. And I think on the clip here, you can really see those nodular, irregular mural components and thick septations. And you can also, again, appreciate the margin is not completely circumscribed and, again, has these kind of outpouching areas and angular and indistinct areas. This is another companion case, another coronal reformat from an ABUS, and I think this shows really nicely in this case the margins are not circumscribed. You can see these angular margins here, which show up nicely in the handheld here. And in contrast, look at these margins, these angular areas, versus this really nice circumscribed margin of the primary case. Again, no, no internal vascularity could be appreciated. The other point I wanted to make is if you ignore the margins, actually the internal characteristics of these are almost identical. The clincher here really is the margins. And this turned out to be a papillary carcinoma. And here's the clip again. The theme here is the clip shows the margins really well. Again, this one has posterior acoustic enhancement because of the cystic components, likely. And the final case, final companion case for two is this clustered, um, this is a clustered microcyst. So this is entirely cystic with these nice, thin, echogenic walls. There's some intervening breast tissue. There was no vascularity, as you can see here. And here's the clip. But I do think it can be very difficult to distinguish, is that just intervening breast tissue in there or are there solid components? And I don't think anyone would fault you for doing a biopsy of this. So moving on to case three, echogenic mass. So this is a 66-year-old woman with a new palpable left breast mass. Her mammogram was negative, but she was heterogeneously dense. And this was what was seen at ultrasound. We have this hyperchoic mass here. There was internal vascularity somewhat indistinct margins, which you can see better here on the clip. Just really can't trace some of those margins out. 
So this was biopsied and it was an angiolipoma. So these are unusual benign tumors that occasionally can be seen in the breast. They're usually circumscribed iso to hyperechoic masses relative to the fat with internal vascularity. They can be visible mammographically and appear as a solid mass or focal asymmetry. And the imaging appearance is nonspecific and usually biopsy is required, especially if they're presenting with a palpable mass or a new finding. Hyperechoic masses are more echogenic compared to fat and equal in echogenicity compared to fibroglandular tissue, which can make them difficult to see, as I'll show in one of the companion cases. Fewer than 10% of breast masses are hyperechoic at ultrasound, and they're almost always benign when you see them. In fact, at least what I learned when I was a resident, if it's echogenic, you don't need to biopsy, it's benign. But that is not exactly true. Um, less than 1% of malignant breast lesions are echogenic. So it's really important in these cases of an echogenic mass to assess for any suspicious features that you might see at ultrasound or mammography to avoid missing the rare echogenic malignancy. And of course, the clinical scenario of a new or enlarging palpable mass is also very important, as I will show. And just to review what are suspicious features of breast masses at ultrasound, and that includes a regular shape, non-circumscribed margins, non-parallel orientation, posterior acoustic shadowing, associated architectural distortion. And again, it's very important to correlate with the mammographic appearance. And clinical history as well, as I, as I discussed. And this is really important with echogenic masses because um, hematoma or fat necrosis or infection can present as, some, as an ill-defined echogenic area. So it can appear suspicious, but in the appropriate clinical scenario, you can safely follow these lesions to make sure they resolve, and I have a few examples of those. So starting with the first companion case, this, is an enlar this patient presented with an enlarging palpable mass. She had actually um, been in our clinic uh, one to two months earlier, had a negative mammogram and negative ultrasound, and she came back and said this area is still growing. And this is the um, still image of the area of palpable concern. And I think this shows up pretty well in the clip, but I'm gonna point out that here's the normal looking, normal echogenic breast tissue, which gets disrupted by this irregular mass that is this, pretty much the same echogenicity as the adjacent breast tissue. And here's the color image demonstrating there is quite a bit of vascularity in there. It actually brings out some of the posterior acoustic shadowing present. And this turned out to be an invasive lobular carcinoma. And here's the clip. I think, I hope that you can see we kind of come out of the mass and there's more normal breast tissue there right there, and as we go in, you can see it kind of going up into the fat and how irregular it is. And this is a mammogram. I don't think this is visible mammographically. Here's the 2009 exam, and then the 2014 exam when she was diagnosed, and it just looks like breast tissue. Unfortunately, she already had an enlarged lymph node with lymph node metastases at this time. And here's the MRI showing this large area of non-mass enhancement typical of invasive lobular carcinoma. Pitfall three, um, companion case. This patient presented with a, actually for her screening mammogram, she had a bruise um, marked by the technologist with these mole markers. And you can see right in here, there's just kind of a vague new um, asymmetry. And this is the appearance at ultrasound. There is an anechoic area centrally with this somewhat ill-defined hyperechoic area right in the area of her bruising. We brought her back two months later, and this had almost completely resolved. It's actually really nice that that little cystic area had collapsed and made us feel comfortable that we were looking at exactly the right place. And that was consistent with a hematoma. And here's the image, here's the clip, just showing some more features of that. So this um, is another um, echogenic mass. This patient presented with a palpable mass in her axilla. It was so far away and difficult to get to, we couldn't see it on the mammogram, so we did an ultrasound, and you can see there's this mixed echogenicity mass with hyperechoic and hypoechoic com components. And this turned out to be a benign phylloides. 
And just to, this is a really a companion case of the prior companion case. Um, this was a biopsy proven fibroadenoma in 2014. Um, you can see it looks like a pretty typical fibroadenoma. Interestingly, she came back less than a year later in 2015 with a rapidly enlarging mass, and this had actually um, came back as a malignant phylloides. So it was probably a fibroadenoma that had a phylloides component in it that just took off and became a malignant phylloides. So. Okay, so finally I'll start with, I'll end with failure to carefully correlate with a mammogram. So we have a 62-year-old woman. This is a solid mass detected on a baseline ultrasound screening exam. This is the handheld image showing this almost anechoic oval parallel um, circumscribed mass with a little echogenic focus suggesting a calcification. And uh, a biopsy was recommended and performed. And unfortunately, we didn't pay too much attention to the, MR, the uh, mammogram. So this was 2009. This was from five years earlier. And you can see there's this mass you can barely see, but there are some coarse calcifications here. And this was a 2016 image. You can see the clip from the biopsy right next to that same coarse calcification. The mass you can't see, it's obscured here. And this turned out to be a fibroadenoma. And the point here is to very carefully correlate with your mammogram. So we could have avoided this biopsy if we saw, oh, there's a, there's a mass there. It's been at least stable for seven years, has calcifications in it. We see a calcification in this mass. This is a fibroadenoma. We don't need to biopsy it. On the flip side, if you do good correlation with the mammogram, you may find some very subtle, suspicious um, findings on the mammogram and something that otherwise looks benign and would prompt a biopsy appropriately to diagnose a cancer. Here's another um, companion case. So this is another ABUS. There's a BB mark, the, I'm sorry, the uh, marker for the nipple. Here's the mass here. And this is what it looks like on handheld. You can see this is, again, parallel circumscribed oval. And it's actually isoechoic to fat. And it's standing out here because it's surrounded by echogenic more echogenic breast parenchyma. And again, this time we did correlate with the mammogram. This is a tomosynthesis, and you can see this completely lucent mass, which correlated to the same location as this, and this is consistent with a lipoma. And here's the clip, showing all benign features, and the key here is it's really isoechoic to the pre-mammary fat up there. Another case um, that showed really nice correlation with mammogram here, so I hope this projects, but you can see this really nice thin pseudocapsule with some fat on the other side of it, and then um, material that's basically isodense to the breast parenchyma. This is that breast within a breast appearance, and this is um, a pretty typical appearance of a hamartoma at ultrasound. They can be quite variable in their appearance because hamartomas are made up of basically breast parenchyma and fat and depending upon the composition will affect how it looks. But this is a typical finding on the mammogram and makes us feel confident that this is just a hamartoma. And here's the clip. Again, showing this has many benign features. It's circumscribed, oval, parallel, and made up of mixed hypoechoic to hyperechoic components, typical of a hamartoma. So this is another mixed echogenic mass. You can see this has a lot of internal vascularity in the echogenic components. And here's the clip, just showing this peripheral echogenic component. If it weren't for that vascularity, I think this could look a lot like a hematoma. Here's the mammogram showing this is a very dense mass. It is palpable. There's actually a second mass here. You can just see on the edge of the clip here. And this turned out to be a B-cell lymphoma. And I think this is the last companion case of the series here. I just put this in here because I think it looks almost identical to the case I just showed. Very dense mammographic mass. This woman presented with a bruising history of trauma, and this looks like a typical hematoma. There was no internal vascularity, and this completely resolved on follow-up. So we did not biopsy this. We just had her come back. So if you remember nothing else from this talk, Malignancies can have benign features at ultrasound. Very important to assess the margin. That will often be the key 
finding even with many other benign features. And also to look for vascularity, it's helpful if it's present, not terribly helpful if it's not. Complex cystic and solid masses versus clustered microcysts and complicated cysts can be very difficult to distinguish. Remember that about a third or more complex cystic and solid masses can be malignant, so if you just can't tell and you think there might be a solid component, do the biopsy. And then remember to correlate with the mammogram. This can help you avoid unnecessary biopsies and also avoid missing subtle suspicious features and otherwise benign appearing malignancy. Thank you.